So these are the four. Now we have a picture of all four when they were still alive. Oh, that's neat. Okay. Now the only living is Drew Dix from Vietnam. Okay. And uh, so we honor Pueblo, home of heroes, with these four recipients. And their hometowns are all Pueblo, Colorado. Right. at the Air Force Academy. One of the fifth year seniors, fourth year seniors was doing a uh, essay on Medal of Honor recipients, World War II in Italy. Uh, in a way was one, a couple of others. And he came across the name of William J. Crawford mm -hmm. in Italy around Monte Cassino. And he went and attacked and destroyed three German machine gun nests and was later wounded and captured. His unit thought that he had been killed, killed in action, and so he was re received the Medal of Honor. And his father accepted the medal posthumously from President Harry Truman. Wow. So a, fifth, a fourth year cadet up at the United States Air Force Academy was doing a paper on Medal of Honor winners from uh, recipients, recipients from yeah. uh, Italy because of uh, Senator Inouye and a couple of others. Mm -hmm. So he's looking at the names and he saw William Crawford, William J. Crawford. That's the guy who's cleaning our toilets. So they went up to him and asked him, are you the William J. And they found out he had never received his medal from a president of the United States. Wow. Now I just followed a little narrow ditch. Oh, it must have been 18, maybe 24 inches wide and almost four feet deep. I stayed pretty close to it. And, uh, and sure enough, there's a brushy t terrain, a, a, a well-camouflaged uh, area right, right ahead. Of, and out of that came a burst of machine gun fire. It was, I was running to, for this little ditch. He was shooting right under my feet. Some of the rounds probably went between my legs and never touched me. Unknown to Crawford at the time, a total of three German machine gun emplacements were hidden in the immediate area. Ever the cunning scout, Crawford focused on getting to the gun that had just missed him. I had a gas mask and some stuff on me. I had to shed, get rid of it to crawl up this ditch. And I crawled back into that brush there above these guns here. I crawled by one of them by waiting. Here was one right 10 feet below me and opened fire on me. An overwhelming amount of fire raged from the hidden nests, pinning his company down. Crawford knew he must do something quickly. The survival of his company depended on the elimination of those enemy machine guns. So I threw a hand grenade at that farthest one. Crawford's grenade was right on the mark. The blast destroyed the enemy gun and the entire crew. Amidst the chaos, Crawford made his next move, taking aim with his M1 rifle, and in an instant, destroyed the second nest of machine guns. And then I fired my rifle at the bottom, one right by me, because I couldn't throw the hand grenade there. Fully exposed to the enemy and operating on sheer instinct and adrenaline, Crawford targeted the third and final nest with a barrage of grenades. Then I threw another hand grenade over there where I thought some Germans was, and two or three more jumped up, ran into a nearby forest. This allowed the company to move on. With nearly all of the hostile forces dead and the last of the Germans scurrying into the forest, Crawford dove into one of the destroyed nests, seized the enemy weapon, and fired at the fleeing Germans. 
In a truly heroic effort, Private Crawford single-handedly destroyed all three German emplacements. His actions facilitated the advance and ensured the safety of his company. President Ronald Reagan was giving the graduation speech that year, and he presented Mr. Crawford his Medal of Honor. That's so cool. There's something I want to do that means a lot to me and I'm sure will mean a lot to you. We're graced with the company of a man who believed so much in the values of our nation that he went above and beyond the call of duty in defending them. In July 1944, a grateful nation bestowed the Medal of Honor on a soldier, a private, for extraordinary heroism on Hill 424 near Alta Villa, Italy. This soldier could not accept the award that day. He was a prisoner of war, and his father accepted in his behalf. Since early in this century, it has been customary for the President to present the Medal of Honor. Well, nearly 40 years have gone by, and it's time to do it right. A native son of Colorado, and certainly a good friend of the Air Force Academy, will forever be in the select company where the heroes of our country stand. It gives me great pleasure to ask Mr. William J. Bill Crawford, formerly of the 36th Infantry Division, to come forward. Thank you, sir. I would think everyone could sit down, couldn't they? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, please be seated. Sometimes I don't know my own power. <laughs> now, William Crawford and his wife are the only two non-Air Force-related people interred at the Air, uh, Air Force Academy Cemetery. Wow. Because of that. And because he was the janitor there. Yeah, he That's was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And Carl Sitter received his. He was a lieutenant in Korea. Mm -hmm and uh, received his, he stayed in the Corps, uh, later a colonel. This is his actual uniform. Oh, wow. This is his standby Medal of Honor. His name is on the back of that. Wow. Uh, the actual original Medal of Honor, uh, when the family has no use, they return it to the Pentagon. And we had to get special uh, permission from both the Marine Corps and the Pentagon to display his uniform and his medal. That's amazing. So here at the museum, they have a missing man table, a POW table. Anytime you go to any military function, they are gonna have a missing man table. You're gonna see the salt and the lemon and the rose and the candle. This is to never forget our fallen comrades, our presence of war, bring them home, bring them home with honor, bring them home safely and never forget what they have sacrificed, them and their families have sacrificed for our country. We have a fifth Medal of Honor. This is Warren C. Dokum. Oh. His only relationship to Pueblo or the state of Colorado is he's buried here. Okay. Okay. But during the American Civil War, he captured a Confederate battle flag and received the Medal of Honor. That's very cool. So here in Pueblo area, yeah. we have five, five Medal of Honor. So if you know me, you know I love World War II posters. I love these posters. And every one of these posters is original and some I've never seen before. And they're so amazing. Wings over America, protect his future. I've seen this a million times. Gee, I wish I was a man. I joined the Navy, I think it's funny. Uh, this is Dory Miller, the gunner uh, during Pearl Harbor. Very cool. Again, all original. All right, now this I'd also like, this is witchcraft, the bombardier jackets. Look at all the jackets. So this is actual from witchcraft. 
uh, that was worn, and witchcraft was really unique. In, in the back, you can see it, it did 135 missions without ever a turn back. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh dear, you can kind of read it back there, but look at yeah. these uh, flight jackets. Yeah. They're all very neat. Very cool. Okay. Awesome. does a very nice job of honoring women service. And look at these uniforms. You have a World War II uh, Marine or Army Captain, another World War II Army Captain. Here's Air Force, uh, Navy, Navy, Marine, Coast Guard, and then the very last one is a WASP uniform. But it's very nice. They do a very good job of honoring women of service in the military.